Welcome to everyone. Uh, we're here to talk about the uh, 941 filing in church windows now in our version 25. Folks, there's just not a whole lot to this. There's honestly, we're, I'm kind of going to start with some technical things here initially um, before we get started on the actual processing of the form itself. First of all, everybody should be getting an email from us just with a reminder uh, later today, if it's not already been sent, frankly, about ensuring that you're on version 25.23.1. If you're using Church Windows Payroll, you simply have to be on this version. Okay, this includes the New Year's tax tables, at least the preliminary ones for 24. Um, it has a, a state tax table updates. We are working on another patch already with some more state tax table updates, um, which will be released sometime in February. But you've got to make sure that 25.23.1 is installed because that is the one that includes all of the tax tables and, uh, and in this case, some Atrix updates that allows the, the functioning of that to work better. Okay. If you have the 25.23.1 and you are still getting an error when trying to be able to uh, process tax documents, here's what you need to do. You need to go to our website, churchwindows.com, hover over more, and go to the Our Partners link. When the our partners when our partners page loads, then go down the left and click on Atrix e-file. When the Atrix partner page opens, you're going to go down about 80% of the way, and you'll see right here on the left under product updates, church windows update. Run that. Click on the link, let it run, let it click finish. Then when you go back into church windows, you should be able to run the tax forms error or problem free. Okay? gotten lots and lots of emails about this, lots of calls about this, trying to get ahead of it a little bit for folks um, before you actually have to ensure that the forms are completed and sent or filed by the 31st of January. You can avoid waiting for us where if you get the an error, notably the procedure entry point not found error, um, run this church windows update here under the Atrix partner page. 99.9% .9 of the time that fixes the problem. If I have not had anyone where this did not fix that problem or errors that were users were getting when they were um, pr trying to print the tax forms. Okay, so update this, and if this doesn't fix that problem, please let us know. We'll be happy to talk about it with you or work through it with you. Okay, again, look for another 25232 patch sometime in February that is updating more state tax tables um, in the course of the, throughout the course, you know, that we've received since the beginning of the year. Okay. You can e-file the 941 if you wish. As far as I am aware, we are aware there is no requirement to e-file with them, only the W-2s and 1099s if you have 10 or more combined returns. Okay. But if you still wish to send in, print and send in your 941 form, you may absolutely do that, okay? Before you go in and do, the, you know, process the 941, you want to go to administration, sys info, and right here at the home screen, make sure that all of this information is filled out as it pertains to the church's organization information, church name and address, tax ID information, federal tax ID information. Um, so just make sure this is here so when you actually process the form, the uh, software will have all the data it needs in order to be able to upload that into the Atrix form for you, okay? But again, you can either e-file or print. I think it's like $9.95 or something to e-file the 941 form uh, with Atrix. That would be per quarter. So, but still 10 bucks for e-filing it. You don't have to worry about mailing it in and getting lost in the mail or something. So just FYI, I don't think it's that much. If you are, you know, it, it talks about at the very bottom of that first page there is if you're getting a message about local taxes have not been set up correctly. I don't have that problem in my data, so I can't show it to you. Okay. But if we go into local taxes up here under data setup, and it could reference miscellaneous taxes too. But if you go to local taxes here, you highlight one, you click edit, 
and typically over here on the right hand side it's in this menu called tax okay that's what's usually missing when that is when users are getting that error or or message or there's a local tax account number that's missing that's detailed on the second page there folks at the top but and you've got to check this for all of your local taxes you know because if you don't know who has one and has had one assigned or used you might just want to be you know uh, proactive about it and just check all of the local taxes when you have the appropriate uh, tax chosen you simply click finish and then OK, and then you go back and hopefully the report should run. OK? It should be that easy to fix. If you don't, if it's not working out for you and you have questions or you have problems, please call us. We're happy to help walk you through it or get that fixed up for you. Maybe something strange, who knows? OK, so when we're now ready to process our 941 form, we go to report slash export. We go to tax reports and tax forms not draft quarterly 941 tax forms okay when we do that you might get the atrix updater if you want to click yes on that to make sure that you've got the most recent forms by all means do that i just did that today so the forms are updated it's checked them and it knows that they are current if it didn't it would prompt me to update so notably the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure we're choosing the appropriate year from the year menu, okay? So I choose 23. Here are all of my 2023 forms, including my 941 Schedule B, 941V report. That's because, of course, I'm filing for quarter four of 2023. But this is how you do this, folks, whether, whatever quarter you're, in, you're running it for, okay? The government will or Atrix will have the first quarter form for 2024, probably sometime in March, okay? Um, so again, as long as you're keeping up with these Atrix updates, then eventually the 2024 20, 941 Schedule B will appear as well. So we choose that form. Reporting can, period can be left as any, but you must come over here to the right and under quarter choose quarter, the quarter you're processing it for, okay? Once you've chosen that, then we're going to simply click print. Okay. It now pops up and asks us or prompts us with the message about, is this total correct for the quarter? Okay. I kind of been telling folks this for a while is that unless I know that figure is wrong, I'm typically always going to say yes to this. Okay. Meaning, because this is the amount that's being brought in from payroll. So unless I have something set up incorrectly or I've done something that I shouldn't have, something that needs to be maybe fixed in payroll, 95% of the time or more, I'm going to click yes on this. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about this a little bit later too, but this is a common question that we get, you know, well, what if you're a, a quarterly depositor? Okay. You're not a monthly depositor or semi-weekly. Okay. Well, so if you don't make your deposit until the end of the quarter, we have to, and you have not deposited anything with EFTPS, we're going to click no to this. Okay? So it says enter the amount, correct amount here. And so if I haven't deposited anything and I deposit four times a year after the, each quarter, I'm going to leave that amount as zero and then click yes. Now you're thinking, why is that? Well, We'll get to the form and we won't see it because I want to process it the way that I'm going to process it because I am going to do monthly is it will show an amount due on that line on the amount due line on the form because I have not deposited anything yet. Okay. This also kind of ties back to folks who have you know deposits of totaling 2,500 or under 2,500 who insist that they have to be able to choose monthly as a depositor. Not true is you can still continue to deposit monthly and still check quarterly as your amount, as your, as your deposit schedule. We'll look at that in a minute, okay? But we're going to cancel out of this. We're going to click print again, and I'm going to click yes on that. So yes, these are the totals for the quarter for me. Now it's going to actually open up the screens as we're seeing them there on page two. Should come up with our first uh, page here momentarily. Takes a few seconds sometimes, folks. Okay.
You may get prompted to be able to verify your tax ID information. Um, it also says before there on there, before I thought I'd said no to this when I was trying to process this before, folks. Hang on. Let me try this again. I had said no. All right, let's try this again. Quarter 4, 2023, 941, click print. Is this correct? Well, it probably de detected folks that I did it already, and it did. I'm sorry. So you can look for those pages as the screenshots are detailed there on the bottom of pages 2 and 3. I'll talk through it. You know, verify that your federal EIN number is correct, okay? If you're filing a, a 941 for multiple databases, like you've got uh, church, school, and the church, and you need to combine them, you can. But most of you are going to probably choose, no, you, I use a single data payroll data file for this EIN. Then it actually asks you to verify your church name, you know, address, you know, contact information there on that page, and then filing for your uh, employer, company employer. It's really just not too terribly much to it, folks. If you have state and local tax items, the, the, the Atrix program will bark at you. It will show you red lines if there is something which is not being is not correct, like you have a missing account number or something, okay? Uh, uh, like a state tax or a local tax ID number or something, okay? So again, it will not let you process those until you get those things straightened away, and there's an edit function on those windows that allows you to do that. So anyway, to jump up to the third page there, we're now at the actual preview of the 941 form where it details the three steps that are part of the processing of the report. So basically, review and edit, my copy and federal copy or state copy, mirror these three little sections right up here at the top left in the yellow banner. You see that? Review and edit, my copy, federal copy. Okay. So those are the three steps we have to get through in order to process the form. If we don't want to show this message again, I can check do not show this message again, but I'm just going to click OK through it, and it's going to pop up and prompt me with the box there on the page that says, please complete the red fields, okay? So here I click OK on that, and it jumps me down, and the first thing it makes me choose is which one of my line 16 boxes represents my deposit schedule, okay? So because my total deposits are well over 2,500, it will allow me to choose either monthly or semi-weekly, okay? I'm a monthly depositor. Notice I cannot even check um, I shouldn't even be able to check that because um, it because I'm not. I, I have more than 2,500 in in total deposits for in, in my in my tax liability for the quarter. So I'm going to choose monthly, and I'm going to verify that my month one, two, and three li tax liability matches the amount that I actually paid, totaling 6878.56, and it does. Okay. I did that before I logged in here, checked my accounting, made sure that all of those payments were correct. I'm now going to click the, the right-facing arrow up here at the top, top left to go to page 3. And we've got to go down here, and you've got to make sure that Part 5 is complete with the name of the representative or you know, responsible party, the name of your title, and the respective phone number or contact information for the... Um, for for whomever to you know get for the uh, government to contact you um, should they need to okay so then in addition to that you may also have to go down to the bottom of page three and make sure that that very bottom line is the IRS responsible party information on this file with the IRS current and you may have to check yes or no if that's still read okay in this case ours is checked okay so now it's going to allow me to go ahead and click uh, next step, and it says we're going to agree to the D verify report complete. It now then moves the bar over from review and edit to my copy. So when I now click print, and if I were to print that, it would say draft copy on it, and that is the copy that is for the church's records. We get so many calls on this, folks. Okay got to follow those three steps across the top. 
go from review and edit to my copy to print the church's copy. Okay, so once I've sent that to my printer, I verified that it's an actual draft copy. I'm going to go to next step. The bar is going to move over to federal copy. I'm just going to close the Atrix form because I want to print it. But if you want to enroll in the e-file, um, you know, you can do this, but you're not required. So we're just going to close that. And now it pops up and gives us the option to either e-file. Sorry, that was a different program, folks. Here I can choose either e-file or print. So if you want to e-file the 941 with Atrix, you would choose e-file. And then below that, then you would get processed to go into create or set up an account or confirm the filing with Atrix with a digital signature, as the screenshot there uh, at the bottom of that last page shows. Or if we click print, it allows us to print the actual official government copy. This would be then the copy that you would then uh, that you would then uh, put in the envelope and mail and send into the government. Okay, or whichever option you are. But I believe it is my understanding that you are only required to e-file ten or more total returns for 1099s and 1096s or 1099s and W2s, not the 941 form. Okay. So when it's done, it's going to ask me here, did I complete processing the report? If I am, I'm going to click yes. If, I'm going to, if I say no, it's going to take me back and allow me to print that. So I always recommend, folks, do not respond to that final question until you have grabbed that final federal copy off the printer and verified that it is actually um, uh, fileable, okay? that it's printed correctly, that it was all legible and everything else. Um, you can go back into history and reprint that if you wish, but why? When if you just simply wait and say no, you can just go back and reprint it again if you wish. Okay, so I can now click finish if I grabbed it off my printer, and it'll take me back to my main tax form page. And now if I want to access that again, I can go right up here to history in the upper right, and it will show my 941 processing for January 16th today. There it is, 941 Schedule B, date saved, 116 at um, 12 a.m. or whenever. Um, status, print, and mail. That's what, it's, that's what I've chosen to do. Okay. Yeah, had I e-filed with Atrix, it would say e-file. Okay. So just be aware, this history will provide information for you as well. Okay. And again, I can even go from here and do view and print. I can edit it. There are things I can do with it here, but this is a record of where I can access that information again. Okay. All right. So while we did miss out on some screens there, folks, it's not, there's just not a whole lot of terribly important information on that if you're paying attention. If you are looking at that, I think you can get through those. And if you have questions or problems, please reach out to us. Um, but this is where I'm going to leave our topic for today.